Chit chat with cutie, that's what they said, yep. Chit chat with cutie was killing. Chit chat with QT for all of this tea. What's up, cuties? Thank you guys so much for joining me for this recap of Love and Maritonsville season six, episode 14. Caillou, what? Now, you guys know everything that I state are my own personal opinions only, and that's what you guys will hear in this video. If you have not liked the video, please take the time to do so. Please also hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when I drop future videos and also subscribe. So let's go ahead and get into this video. This is a continuation from episode 13 of Kimmy and Kiowa meeting up to discuss if Kimmy was a side chick. So Kimmy told Kiowa that there was an opportunity for Kiowa to say, no, I didn't say you were a side chick. And Kiowa let Kimmy know that she didn't know that Kimmy felt like she was responsible for what other people said. Now, Kimmy, let's just be clear. The other people that said you were a side chick was Maurice's own two brothers, Mark, as well as Marceau, and Martel Hope. So don't you think that it was Maurice's job to say you weren't a side chick? I mean, I've just been baffled because where they do that at? How are you going to expect the ex-wife who was still married when you started dating her then husband to come out and clear up your name and reputation? And for Kimmy to say that she feels like it was a lack of integrity on Kiowa's part was utterly absurd to me. And I'm sorry, Kiowa, is better than me. Now, Aunt Debbie, you guys know Aunt Debbie. Debbie said this in my live last night. She said, how is the next gonna expect the ex to clear up her name? And I agree. But Kaya will let Kimmy know that she didn't feel like she was responsible for that. And she wasn't. Kimmy said she had to take a lot of heat. She didn't want Jalen to feel like she was a side chick. She said Jalen had to see and hear that about her so they could protect Kiowa's son. So Kimmy's exact words were, so they can protect your son. Well, Kimmy, guess what? That is also Maurice's son. And he should have been the one to make sure that Jalen knew she wasn't a side chick. But yeah, that was that scene in a nutshell. It was really crazy to me because I've never seen Kimmy have this same energy with Maurice. All of this anger that Kimmy has that's directed towards Kiowa should have been aimed at Maurice. It's not Kiowa's job. It really isn't. So next up, guys, was Stormy and Mel meeting up. And child, it looked like to me that they met up at some type of smoothie bar or something like that. And Miss Stormy rolled up in a Rolls Royce with a driver. And I was just like, girl, why? Why? Now, I'm not hating. I promise you, I'm not. But that was just extra as hell. You couldn't throw on some jeans and a shirt and hop in your G-Wagon and drive on down to the smoothie bar. And unless that's how she rolls everywhere throughout Huntsville, I think it was definitely for the cameras. But anyway, Stormy wanted to have a conversation with Mel to once again see where they stood. 
She said she wanted to meet things head on so she can have some clarity. In Mel's confessional, she said that she agreed to meet with Stormy so they can have effective communication so they can move forward and have some amount of peace. But they greet each other and give each other pleasantries. And Mel said this is a restart. So Stormy tells Mel she feels like Mel would rather avoid harder conversations because it's easier for Mel to shut it down than to go through it. Mel said if she avoided hard conversations, she wouldn't have hosted the tea party and she wouldn't have met up with Stormy in this moment. And Mel said, yeah, based on what Petty Betty shared at the tea party, she really don't see how she's avoiding hard conversations. Stormy then asked Mel how she felt about that, meaning how she felt about Petty Betty being a little disrespectful at that tea party. And Mel asked Stormy when they first met did she know that that's how her mother felt about her? Stormy said her mom is someone that she can't control. She said Betty didn't even like her husband when they first met. She said Betty didn't like a lot of her friends. And she also said Betty don't even like her own sister. And for me, Stormy confirmed what a lot of us have felt, that Betty is basically miserable she just gives off a negative ball of energy, if you ask me. I get Stormy not being able to control her mom, but what you can control is your mom having personal access to people or being in their space. And you should have left Betty at home and not even took her to that tea party because you already know what she gives. You just said that. She don't like anybody. So why even put Mel in a predicament where she could possibly have some type of confrontation with your mother? But Stormy goes on to say she's never been able to change her mom's mind. Mel asked if she knew her mother's opinion of her. And Stormy said that she knew her opinion of Mel from television. And Stormy, you also knew what your mother put out on social media about Mel. So again, why even bring her anywhere? That's messy. But to give Stormy a little credit, she did say that her mother did not know Mel, so she shouldn't have had an opinion outside of TV. She says she can't stop what she has to say, but that don't mean that she agrees with her mom. Mel said that she don't think that Stormy agrees with her mother. And I'm sorry, Mel, I do. But Mel mentioned that just coming out of the situation with Tisha and Messy Earth Wanda, she's not in a position emotionally or mentally where she's in a friendship and caring about her friend, which in this case would have been Stormy, and worrying about why they mama don't like them. And that's all facts, straight facts. Look, I'm your friend, not your mama's friend. And I would have done the same thing that Mel did. Mel in turn handled Stormy with a long handled spoon because if she's feeling like me, if I cuss your mama out, then we really gonna have a problem. But Stormy goes on to say that her mom was so vocal about Mel because Stormy and Mel's friendship stopped progressing. And Stormy, that's not your mama's business. You are an adult. And Mel let her know her mama was vocal before they even met each other. And once she saw all of that, basically she was out as she should have been. You and your mama, this is my opinion, can bounce. But Mel said in her confessional that she's really not trying to fall for the okie doke again where people's mamas are trying to come for her again. And I know that's right. Game, recognize game. But Stormy ended up saying that she felt like 
her and Mel were drifting off before then because Mel changed her number or Mel just needed her space. And Mel just ended up looking at her like, girl, okay. And look, we all know that this is what Mel does after the reunions. She said that, Stormy said that she knew that. So I'm just confused as to why Stormy seems to be puzzled. We also must remember that all of these friendships, Destiny, Stormy, whatever it was between Mel and Tisha, all of this is going on at the time when she was in a messy divorce and messy child custody case. And as a friend, I would know my girl needs some time because on top of filming this show, she's dealing with real life shit. But Stormy says in her confessional that she don't know why it's so hard for Mel to say her true feelings. Mel just did, Stormy. But she said Mel tries to gaslight people and have them believe that there is not an issue. Stormy, the issue is your mama. But Stormy said Mel passively, aggressively always act like there is a problem. And she just feels like it is what it is. And what it is, Stormy, is a red flag. What it is, Stormy, is I'm good on that. What it is, Stormy, is Mel is not about to go down that same road and allow you or your mother use her as a storyline. Your mom put her true feelings out there. You ended up being at Sheree's house partying with Martell and Sheree, and she good on that. And look, I think Mel and Stormy could have had a great friendship. But again, sometimes those red flags, you cannot ignore them. And I don't blame Mel for putting a stop to things. But basically, that was that scene. The next scene, guys, is the core six. Well, mine is Mel. Uh, they met up at the venue where they will have the Black Espo. And Marceau and Tisha arrived. Tisha was walking through that parking lot, baby. And look, we have heard allegedly that Tisha may have had some type of mommy makeover. And if she did, that was money well spent. Tisha is a brick house, okay? A big difference from the Tisha that we've seen, if you think back to like season one. Season one, Tisha was just straight up and down. I didn't see a curve in sight. Or maybe it was the nun-like clothes. You know, Marceau had her covered child from head to toe. But yeah, Tisha's body looks good. But as they go into the space, Kimmy comes in, Martel comes in, and Maurice comes in. And what is up with Martel? Before I get into what they discussed, which was really male, Martel looks old, tired. It looks like he may be getting Botox in his face or got beat up. Uh, did coleslaw hit him upside his head? Were they in another alleged battle or fight with each other i mean his face just looked swollen like he was crying or something i don't know but anyway they had the discussion about mel tisha let them know that she met with mel and mel let her know that she would not be participating she did say that mel told her you guys go ahead on don't make this about me gave her some tips and all of that and Martel's ass was ready to do exactly what he always do, try to point blame on Mel. He said something about, oh, well, when it comes to the community, I just think that we all should be able to come together. Look, man, whatever community you in, Mel don't want to be in, and you know why. So cut the crap, Martel. But Tisha did go on to give them Mel's reasonings, and Mel's reasons were valid. Look, we know at the reunion, the last reunion, 
a couple months ago. That's when Mel and Tisha had that big exchange. That's when Tisha had the puppets and called Mel a dark, evil soul and all of that. And Mel told her right, and Tisha let the group know that Mel said, look, a couple months ago, we all were on bad terms and I'm just not there yet. And I doubt Mel will ever be back there when it comes to the core six. But they all stood around talking. Maurice even said that he had hoped that Mel would have participated in all of that, but it is what it is. They look at the space. Martel takes another glance at Tisha's behind and they leave. And real quickly, I did think it was funny when Marceau basically caught Martel looking at Tisha's body. Martel tried to play it off talking about it looks like somebody's been in the gym. And man, look, you ain't say nothing about her biceps and anything else. You couldn't even see it because she was in a full denim two-piece outfit. So the only thing that you were able to see was that small waist and that big butt. And Marceau clocked it and checked Martel's ass. But basically, guys, that was the gist of that scene. Again, it was about Mel. So the next thing, guys, was Maurice and Monster meeting up at a gym to shoot some hoops and Monster was kicking Maurice's butt when it comes to playing basketball. But I guess he took Monster there so they can communicate about how Monster is feeling and all of that. Maurice really needed to do this, I think probably a long time ago. Monster let him know he really does not feel comfortable when it comes to voicing his opinion and all of that. Maurice tried everything in his power to make him feel comfortable, let him know it's okay to say no or all of that good stuff. But I think that Maurice talks too damn much, just like Marceau. We know that they can't really come out and say exactly what they mean in a short time span. They have to yap and talk and lecture and yap and talk and lecture and if i had to listen to that every day i would shut down too i do think that this was a well needed exchange between maurice and monster because we know that kiowa basically told maurice in the last episode or maybe it was the one before that he really needs to talk to him more kimmy has been telling maurice the same thing and hopefully with this conversation with Monster, Maurice finally gets it. Stop lecturing Monster. Stop lecturing Kimmy. Stop lecturing Kiowa. And start listening and being open and receptive to what other people are saying instead of you just wanting to hear what you're saying. But overall, a pretty good scene. We will see, I guess, if this will last. Let's hope they also change this boy's name. I know Maurice tried to act like it meant power or something, whatever he said to Carlos. But yeah, enough of Monster. Monster from a child, we learned is something that scares you, somebody that scares you. And I think that it's time for him to let that go. We also know that Marceau said that Monster no longer wants to be known as Monster. I think he said Monster wanted to be known as Reese or something like that. So anyway, that was this scene in a nutshell. This next scene was Courtney and his mother. So Courtney goes over to his mom's house so they can have a talk. And the talk was basically about Stormy wanting more kids. And he told his mother that he basically just puts it off. He don't even want to talk about it. And she was kind of shocked. And she said, really? And Courtney let her know, yeah, you know, when it comes to family, he wanted to break the curse. And I was just confused as far as what breaking the curse meant when it comes to having children with your wife that you are happily married to. 
But Courtney let his mom know that, you know, she was a single mom and he really just wanted to make sure that his family stayed tight and close. And I guess small, because again, the marriage is happy, so you can still have a close, tight-knit family, even if you had more kids. But his mother gave him a little history as far as what she went through. She had to make it do what it do. She said it was so rough at one point that she had to make a decision on whether she would buy medicine or provide with her being a single mom. And they got a little emotional. So I saw her getting choked up and Courtney just broke down. And Courtney let her know, you know, it's not like he's looking to get a divorce or anything like that, but he don't even want to think about him being a single parent or Stormy being a single parent. So I guess it was very traumatic for Courtney as far as being raised by a single mom. It looks like his mom did a great job um, she even said herself that it worked. And it also looks like his mother was also raised by a single parent because she said that she knows how it feels to grow up without a dad. And when she said that, Courtney lost it. And it was sad. It's always sad to me to see a man become so emotional it is a good thing because we don't want men just bottling things up and not expressing their feelings and all of that. But the effect of his dad not being in his life and is still bothering him till this day is sad. It really is. But it was a really good conversation between Courtney and his mom. She let him know the most important thing is just being there for your kids to guide them and all of that. And that's the important thing. Also for him to communicate that to Stormy. And look, I know Courtney is married to Stormy and they have shown Stormy's mama, but give me Courtney's mama any day when it comes to love and marriage Huntsville. She conducted herself in a manner such as Miss Van, very respectful, um, had a great talk with her child. We've seen the same thing with Miss Van talking to Mel and Carlos. This is what we want to see. We don't want to see old evil ass Betty or messy ass Wanda. It starts with you, Carlos. Break the cycle. We had Mama D. We had Mama Joyce. We had all of that. But when it comes to you having women right in front of your face that you can showcase to the world as far as being parents to adult children, this is what we want to see. So can you swap out Betty and just make sure we see Courtney's mom? Very, very good scene. We'll see how it plays out down the line when it comes to Stormy and Courtney if they will have more kids or not. But guys, we are finally at the last scene and it is the Black Espo, as Tisha liked to call it. And Tisha is with the, I'm assuming the event planner. They are moving tables around and all of that. Marcel walks in in operational manager mode. He wants to make sure things are in line and in order. But Marceau looks up and he noticed that Tisha had these balloons. And he said, oh, you got balloons anyway? And she was like, yeah, we need something around that sign. And he was tripping. Now Marceau is being super cheap during this scene. Tisha let him know it was only $325 and he seemed to be still a little bit upset. But Marceau started giving the event planner a uh, direction, I guess we can say, telling her how he wanted the lighting. And Marceau asked her, why do you have two projectors in one screen? And she just said, the event planner, I don't know. And I know why you don't know, because it looks like you guys just don't know what you're doing, if you ask me. But he told the event planner to ask whomever why they only had one screen. And she said that she would, and he basically gave her an order and said, can you ask him now? So Marceau came in 
on 10, okay? After he gave the event planner orders, Tisha looked at him like he was crazy, like, what is up? And in their confessional, Tisha said, look, how much coffee did you have this morning? She said that he's coming in hot, and he was hot. So I don't know if Marceau snapped into, again, operational manager mode or what, but I must say, it don't seem like Tisha knew what she was doing, so somebody had to get things in order. And Marceau did answer Tisha in the confessional, and he let her know everything is just everywhere. Balloons over here, the stage is not set up, tables there, and he said it's okay to come in a little hot. Tisha was like, yeah, well, you came in on 20. And Marceau said, yeah, well, maybe I needed to come in on 50. But they go back to the scene and Marceau is asking Tisha, what's what? Whose spot is this? What's going here? Tisha let him know where chocolate and the bottle was going to be and where Scope was going to be. And then he looked over at Stormy and I guess he saw how much space she was taking. And he asked Tisha, hey, did Stormy pay for a spot? And Tisha said, no, why? And he said, because she needs to. Now, at first, for me, and I don't want to jump ahead too much, I thought this was a made-up storyline. I'll get to why in a little bit, but Marceau was upset as far as Stormy not paying this fee. But Tisha, again, is looking at Marceau like he's crazy, and she said, look, chocolate in the bottle didn't pay for a spot either. Now, here's my thing. We know that there's been some talking out in these YouTube streets regarding chocolate in the bottle, but if Marceau and Tisha are selling chocolate in the bottle, wouldn't they be the one who have paid the fee? Or are they trying to admit in a roundabout way that they stuck a label on that and called it their own? Just a little odd to me. But Tisha again lets him know that she didn't tell Stormy anything, and he said, well, you need to. And Marceau orders Tisha, hey, just go get the money. We told everybody in the group. Tisha said, no, we did not say that to everybody in the group. We told them that they can have a spot. Again, not knowing what the hell they doing. Because if it was the expectations of everyone to pay for their spot, they should have known that well in advance. They should not be telling anybody this the day of the event. So Tisha don't know what she doing and Marceau don't either because that's tacky to me. Tisha tells Marceau that we asked for sponsorship, but we didn't say there was a demand for them to pay. Marceau tells her, well, I thought we agreed that everybody was going to pay. Tisha said no. Now this is where I'm also a little confused at because remember, this was all about the community. When Mel asked for a fee, Marceau tripped out, tripped out bad. And he also tried to insult Mel by saying that anybody that wanted to collect money wasn't about the community. But here Marceau is trying to collect some money. Where they do that at? But he tells Tisha again, go ahead over there and collect the money from Stormy. Tisha let him know it is tacky and I'm not going over there and telling her she has to pay. She said, well, you can go do it. Marceau was like, cool, who do I need to talk to? And Tisha said, hey, whoever you want to. And Marceau strolls on over there to Stormy, who is taking up half of the whole damn event space. Stormy got sofas and balloons and uh, poster boards and all type of stuff, shelves and stands. And in my opinion, she is overshadowing everybody. Now, I'm not sure if that's why Marceau was upset because I'm sure, I can't even say Stormy's booth, but I'm sure Stormy's area looked better than everyone else since it was so damn massive. Now, had they told Stormy and everybody else in advance that they had to pay, I think Stormy should have paid five times the fee because of the amount of space that she's taken up. But he goes up and says hi to Stormy. He told her she's really hooking it up and that he likes it. 
And then Marceau says, hey, Stormy, did you get a chance to send that money over? And I'm not sure why he would say it like that because Tisha just told him seconds ago that they didn't tell anybody they had to pay. So Stormy looked confused and she asked him what money? And he said the $100. Stormy said, ain't nobody told me nothing about $100 and why didn't you all say something at the meeting? Marceau said, I don't know. And Stormy said, well, y'all should have. And she said that way she would have known before now. And she said, especially now that you coming up to me asking me about $100. And she told Marceau, that's weird. That's very low vibrational. And she told Marceau, you're bigger than that. Marceau said, bigger than what? And she said $100 today. Now, this is where I felt like possibly this was a fake storyline because look, Stormy has stated she's made over 20 something million dollars and Marceau has stated he made 17 plus million dollars. So I'm just confused why these in quotation mark multi-millionaires are tripping over $100. It's just not making sense to me. For me, it feels like a made up storyline because it shouldn't be that deep. Even if Stormy told him, you're low vibrational, but look, you know I got it. So go ahead and get out my face and I'll make sure you get this little measly $100. But they go back and forth. Marceau is trying to joke his way out of this. Stormy is standing on, this is weird, and it is. And Marceau said, you know what would make this weird is if I would have asked for it later. And during their little exchange, Marceau told her, hey, you're being low vibrational too. Stormy goes into this, oh, I'm always on this higher frequency, talking about she's in a different stratosphere. And then Marceau calls Tisha over there. So Tisha walks up and asks what happened. And Marceau says, Stormy comes over here with all of this low vibrational stuff. Stormy was walking away and she turned right back around when she heard Marceau say that. And she told Tisha, no, he had low vibration. She then tells Tisha, let me tell you what your husband did. He came over here asking for a hundred dollars for her space. They then cut to Stormy in her confessional and she said she knows that Marceau didn't just come over here and ask me for $100, especially at the last minute. And she said he's out of his rabbit ass mind. And she said, for real, that's how y'all do business? She said it made sense to her that that's why they came to her at the last minute because she could add value to their event. And she said from now on, she will not be doing business with Marceau going forward. And they cut back to the scene and Stormy is acting like she's real upset. Again, I don't think this shit is true, but she told him, don't come to me about no hundred dollars. And that's how that scene ended. Very unorganized when it comes to what was expected of the vendors, how many vendor spaces you had, this rush of vendors at the last minute, things not set up, just totally unorganized. And I'll say it again. And they wondered why Mel didn't want any parts of it. Tisha was not ready to handle something like this to this capacity, if you ask me, maybe she should have started smaller. I don't know. To me, she wasn't ready because it's not flowing like it should be flowing. No deadlines, no nothing. But it was to be continued, so we will see what happened on this coming Saturday's episode. Just a hot mess. I am excited that I will see Mel's brother Marcus in this scene. Now we know because we saw parts of the live videos that was going around when the Black Expo was really going on. We saw it on Instagram. So we knew that Mel and Marcus was there, but I didn't know that Marcus and Martel had a conversation. So I can't wait to see that. Marcus looked puzzled as hell because it seems like now Mr. Martel wants his support when it comes to he and Mel co-parenting for the kids. 
the kids that he didn't want Mel's brother Marcus watching. Where they do that at? But thank you so much, guys, for joining me for this recap of Love in Maritonsville. It was an okay episode. That's all I could say is okay. The whole season has just been okay. Carlos King, I'll say it again. I don't know exactly what your game plan is, but if you ask me, you are self-sabotaging your own show. This season has been a tad bit boring. It really, really has. But we still talking about it. But guys, drop down in the comments. Let's chit chat about it. Please also make sure to like this video, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. Chat with you guys soon. Bye.